The Home Secretary has warned the House of Lords not to defy the will of the British people. They're debating the illegal migration bill for the first time today. At least the Archbishop of Canterbury is going to wade in. Of course he is. Justin <laughs> Welby. Uh, he's expected to plan. condemn uh, the morality of the bill. It also follows the arrival of a barge set to house hundreds of asylum seekers who've entered the UK. Well, joining us in the studio for more is MP for South Dorset, Richard Drax. The barge is in your constituency. It's going to Portland and you don't want it. No. It's in Falmouth now. Right. It's designed for 222. Yeah. It's going to have 506. Yeah. That's problem number one. Yeah. And even if the rooms are doubled, that leaves about 60 without a room. So they're going to have rooms of three or four on a barge in a highly, highly restricted port yeah. with access from and back and forth uh, on, on a bus. On, they can get on and off. On a bus. Right. They can't wander through the port. So they're going to simply be stuck on what I call it a quasi prison. Right. Because you won't get everybody off at the same time. And I think the frustrations and the issues and the problems that some of them will have will bubble up. And I'm very concerned about what's going to happen on the barge in the port. I'm also concerned with hundreds of migrants who, of whom we know nothing. Mm. And the, the minister yesterday could not confirm whether they were free of criminal offences. Whether that. They, whatever. Mm. Um, and they're morning around a very sensitive seaside resort at the height of summer. But you can't, we can't keep these people in hotels at this huge public expense, Richard. So they've got to go somewhere. Mm. This is classic nimbium, isn't, isn't it? We want them out of hotels, but not in my constituency. <laughs> yes, I, I've been, that's been a, a point made to me many times, and I can very clearly uh, disagree with you uh, in the sense that this is, as I say, a highly restricted former Royal Naval port. It's not a, uh, a centre, for example, in the middle of the countryside or near a big area of um, a big conurbation where the resources can be more easily targeted. This is stuck away in a port that no one can get to. Mm. You've got to go through security to get there and on a bus to get to the actual barge. There's no room for them other than on the barge to do anything. They're going to be given £9 a week to go into my constituency and to do what? I mean, this is a lot of 25 to 30-year-olds uh, who will have probably economic to do. migrants anyway. They're, most of them will be economic migrants wandering around in a very sensitive seaside resort at the height of summer. How much warning did you get that this boat was arriving in mm. port? Uh, the first I heard was about a week before it was announced and the Home Secretary rang me. I then saw the minister in the division lobby that same day and, and told them both what I thought mm. uh, in a very blunt way. Courteous, of course. Of course. Uh, I then heard nothing more. Uh, and I've heard nothing more from them. I get all my news from organisations like you yeah. and the press uh, and, of course, my council, with whom I'm working very closely. And what's happened is that all the negotiations have happened behind our back with a private port. The port have done this for commercial reasons. And now, having decided to put them there, they're now asking us, what well, if we do this, can you help? They get it's the wrong way around. Who gets paid then? Do you say it's, they're doing it for commercial reasons? What, the port is being paid to yes. take these refugees? Yes. It is. How much are they being paid? We don't know. What? But it, it's, um, it, it's apparently a private figure negotiated in private, so well, we won't... The, the taxpayer money. is paying. Public money. And that's, that's like if you, if you moor a boat in a harbour, you mm. have to pay mm. to have it there. Mm. Do we know how long the boat is going to be there? Have they given you... Well, initially, there? initially, 18 months, but I fear because the problem in this country is so big, mm. I suspect barges will increase and that barge will stay there for a lot longer. How did that conversation go? When, when Suella Braverman rang you and um, she said, Richard, are you sitting down? <laughs> how does that conversation go? Does she, does she tell you this is a fait accompli or is she asking your permission? I think fait accompli would be... She did say, we haven't quite decided yet, but I'm afraid I, I, when the uh, news broke mm. a few days later that it had been decided, and I didn't quite agree with that approach, no, I was not consulted or asked. Uh, none of us were. That's the point I've been making. We just have no preparation or comment as to our concerns. And all the statutory authorities agree with me. And this is the wrong place for this particular Why did barge. they choose your port? Well, uh, if you look on the website, it says for jobs and investment. Oh. And in my speech in the House of Commons recently, I said what jobs and what investment. Yeah. I don't see... Jobs on the boat, presumably. Well, there's a security company who look after these young men, yes. Right. So there's being a few jobs the there being paid Hundreds for the taxpayer. Millions of pounds. There's going to be a nurse, as I understand it, uh, at the end of the barge on the quay, living in a hut or something. I'm not quite sure about that. Who's going to look after their medical uh, concerns to prevent them going off and into the few GBs that we have. 
Um, I don't see that working very well either. And there's a very issue, very serious health issues. And uh, the head of our ICB, who has been has some experience with migrants, so many have serious mental TB. health issues. And TB yeah. is a big problem. Infections, if that infection sweeps through a boat like that, uh, yeah. Dorset County will not be able to cope with 506 yeah. young men. And it's no. a very important tourist spot too, where you mm. are. Mm. Do you think this is going to hit the tourist trade? Yes, I, I think inevitably it's going to. We are, uh, it's a family seaside resort mm. which relies entirely for its, most of its revenue in the summer months. Mm. To have, have 500 young men, if they are all out at the same time, in Weymouth, mm. I can see problems uh, occurring. What's the best case scenario, Richard? What's the best case? Let, let's just try to use our imagination for a moment that this, this works well. What does that look like for your community? I don't think it will work well. I mean, the only way we can deal with this is secure reception centres. And I've told the government repeatedly they must start building them fast mm. because this problem is not going to go your, away. But not in your constituency. Well, I, if, I, if, it, if it happens to be, uh, if there's an appropriate place, but I would have thought these uh, centres should be near major conurbations mm. where resources can be easily yeah. sent to these reception mm. centres mm. and the um, people inside them looked after properly. Just ask you one last question, yeah. politically. Disastrous local election results for the Conservatives last week. You didn't have any elections in your patch. No. How much trouble is the Conservative Party in? The government? I think the Conservative Party must start acting like Conservatives. That would be a start. Hmm. Well, we've yes. said that on this show. Yes. That, that would be a start. I mean, I, I, I'm concerned at the direction of travel. Uh, Rishi Sunak, he's a, a good man. Mm. Uh, and uh, he works very hard and he's doing... A lot of good things, and I support him. But we need to hear a much more conservative language, low taxes, mm. a law and order. Gross. I mean, this, this latest episode with the um, demonstrators being arrested, and I'm staggered at the coverage it's got. Yeah. There are hundreds of thousands of people who enjoyed that parade, and there were no incidents. Mm. Now, I wasn't on the ground. I'm not a police officer, and I, it's very hard to judge. But I'm assuming that they thought it was a risk and did their job and prevented rape alarms being chucked into horses, which mm. could have stampeded, and all the rest of it. As it happened, the parade went off faultlessly and everyone came home safe. I would have thought that's a big tick. Well right. done, the police. Right. So more conservative policies from the government? We need much more. The narrative needs to change. And we need to hear a lot more true blue policies as we do. Can I just ask you one more question about your area and this particular issue with the immigration? Um, whoever stands against you in the election, are you intending to stand again in your constituency? I've been readopted, yes. Okay. Quite right too. Will the, whoever stands mm. against you, how will they play out this vote being in the harbour? Will they support it or will they have to come out against it? It raises an interesting political tension, doesn't it? Well, you must ask whoever that person is that question. Uh, I don't pay any attention to... The opposition parties, I'm afraid. I just simply tell my constituents what I believe in and where I'm going, and I hope the message is positive. I don't they have to... your backing on this? Uh, I think most people, it would seem to me, from the emails and support we're getting, yes, they are. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's Richard, Richard. Drax, MP for South Dorset. Thanks so much for coming in and come and join us again.